half of the campus has disappeared, including you. Which is why you're watching this. Thank you so much for tuning in to this information session. My name is Madison Smith. My name is Aeon. Um, I'm a political science major with a concentration in peace and conflict studies. Uh, born and raised in the city of Chicago. And, you know, this past year I sat as the Student Alumni Council president. Um, and, you know, along with Maddie, uh, helped run Pub Quiz, which was a lot of fun. Yeah, a little bit more about me. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. I study English and theater here at Grinnell. I was recruited to play volleyball, so I was an NCAA athlete for three years, four years, which is fantastic. Um, and I work as a senior interviewer at Grinnell as well as um, AAD. So if you, um, you could have been interviewed by one of um, our uh, classmates. Um, and then I also work as a writing mentor. So I'm assigned to intro level English classes and then help them develop their arguments and things like that. So we're just gonna be going through some important things about Grinnell and kind of talking about why we chose to come to Grinnell um, and more about your general Grinnell experience. So enjoy. Do you want to talk about coming to a small town from being from such a big city? Yeah, so d definitely a big, you know, big setting change. Yeah. Um, going from a population of, you know, two and a half million, like Chicago, all the way to, you know, a population of around 9,000 in yeah. Grinnell. Um, but one thing that I found that I loved about that transition was how much you can make it your own. Um, you're going to meet a lot of other students who are pretty much going through the same issue as you. Um, and because of that, you're going to have a nice cohort of people who are learning about who they are apart from the hustle and bustle of the city you might grow up in. Um, there are some great perks to it. You know, there's only three baristas in town, so Saints Rest <laughs> is going to know your coffee order. Um, you know, everything is within walking distance, you know, whereas you don't have a train, a bike will pretty much get you anywhere you need to go. So I found it to be a, a beautiful little slice from home, and it's really become a place I'm really comfortable these four years. And I know you came from a place much bigger than this as well, so I'm wondering, you know, what your thoughts are. Yeah, coming from just outside of St. Louis, it was it was difficult at the beginning but like i definitely think that the community here makes it feel like i'm at home even when i'm not mm -hmm. um and it's so nice to have such a tight group of friends and feel so at home immediately on my first visit at campus actually um i visited with the volleyball coach and then had lunch with the team and um we like like I was sitting at this massive table with the team and my parents and coach and everything. And then as soon as everyone like starts to like get to know each other and start talking, a massive argument over which Sour Patch Kid flavor was the best just broke out. And then suddenly everyone was yelling and we were like, it's red, orange, green. Like it was like this huge argument. And like from that moment, I was like, wow, these are my people. <laughs> it was just so I, fun. I had a very, very similar experience. Really? Um, I, I, I visited Grinnell twice. Mm -hmm. um, the first time was to just kind of learn about what it was because I'd never heard of it before. The second time uh, was to just make sure I loved it as much as I thought I did the first time. And, and I have a distinct memory um, of me and a bunch of other prospective students just hanging out at Bob's Underground, which is, oh, you know, really? our, our old coffee shop and is now a student space on campus. Yeah. And I just remember sitting there playing cards. Um, me and my best friend came together, so we wrote on the walls. And that writing is still there today. And it just always had kind of was a moment where I realized I feel comfortable here in a way that I hadn't felt comfortable at any other college. We were just at Bob's too. We were. That's really yeah, special. I, I check every time I'm there. And That's it's really still there. special. Mm. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So I, I, I want to ask you, in, in your opinion as someone who's you know gone through classes for all four years, why do you think a Grinnell education is unique? I think a Grinnell education is unique is because it's so um, interdisciplinary because like I'm taking um, English and theater classes at the same time and I can do my page to stage work so easily in either section. So I have a dramatic li literature course in theater, but I'm pretty much using all my English skills. Mm -hmm. So I think it's nice to like have two majors that are so nicely paired, but at the same time, I mean, one of our good friends is physics and music. Mm -hmm. And so those are just two passions that he has that are so that are so immense that he needs to study them. And it's awesome to have those two sides of him that he can still pursue both at the same time. Mm -hmm. And you're a political science major, right? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what you want to do? So y yes and no. I, I think one of the things that I loved about Grinnell and, and why I think the Grinnell education is also important is that even if you have a specific major you go into, Grinnell really teaches you how to think. Yeah. which I think is yeah. because of the interdisciplinary nature. You're going to learn so much in so many different areas. You're not only going to leave Grinnell, you know, becoming an expert in whatever thing you decided to focus on. Yeah. You're going to learn whether you're a theater major, a bio major, a poli sci major, critical thinking skills. You're going to learn how to communicate. You're going to learn how to write. Yeah. Um, and 
I, I met with this one alum the other day who was telling me about, about her Grinnell journey. And that is what she highlighted as important about Grinnell. Really? Because she looked at me and she said, Ad, hey, when I was here, computers you know, weren't, wasn't the giant industry it was today. Half the jobs you see today were not even fathomed to have existed when I was a Grinnell student. But I still prospered and got those jobs, not because I studied them in college, but because in college is where I learned how to be the best version of myself academically. Oh. So really, I think that is what I'm taking when yeah. I'm leaving, is, is as much as I love you know, Middle Eastern international relations and politics, <laughs> I'm not gonna limit myself to that. Right. Um, and really, I think that is what makes the liberal arts in Grinnell special yeah. in terms of yeah. learning. I think what also sets Grinnell apart in terms of a liberal arts experience is our advising process. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about your advisors throughout the years? Yeah, so really the, the number of advisors you'll have at Grinnell is exponential, a, as you know. Yeah. Um, but the three main ones when you walk in are, you know, you have a residence life advisor for your living, you have a CLS advisor for just trying to figure out internships and what you value out of a workplace, but the academic advisor is really the super important one. Yeah. Um, and that would be, at the very beginning, your tutorial professor. Right. So, you know, the one required course all first year is kind of a crash course to what it means to be a Grinnellian yeah. uh, with, you know, a bunch of really fun topics. Mine, mine was Calvin and Hobbes, which was phenomenal. Yeah, um, mine was the Enlightenment is musical um, historical right approach. Yeah. It was incredible. It was, it was, studying, um, it was studying historical context of um, Britain and France and Germany and America and then the operas that came out of them, mm. which is so cool because, like, you know, I never really think about, like, oh, like this composer had this whole separate idea, but then this government thing happened and they told the composer he couldn't do that anymore. So like that, that sort of like art and politics thing, that was amazing for me. And my advisor, I'm still very close to my advisor from, mm -hmm. um, from my tutorial. Are you as well? We get coffee every month. It's and so nice. <laughs> and the, the best part is, is, is coming in, I knew I wanted to do political science. Yeah. So although it's okay if you come in not knowing, I, I had a tunnel vision pretty much. But right. it was great to have an advisor who wasn't a political science professor. You know, yeah. uh, Paul Hudgeson was his name, phenomenal pro professor. Yes. Um, and he was an education professor. Mm -hmm. And he was able to kind of have that interdisciplinary view where every time I wanted to stay in my poli sci bubble, he would introduce me to a new class that would do nothing but bolster my interest in a certain area, but yeah. I probably wouldn't have taken because it had like, you know, right. computer science or biology or sociology in the title, which is right. just something I never expected myself to like. Right. Um, so having that individually advised experience where he didn't only know me as like, you know, a the stubborn dude from Chicago, he knew me as, you know, a student, he knew my flaws, he knew my strengths, and he was able to use that yeah. to help me create a curriculum that I think grew my understanding of the world. And that's me. the awesome thing about the tutorial advisor is that because they do teach that class with you, they see you in the classroom and then they mm -hmm. see you as a person as well. Yeah. So I had a very similar thing. I'm very humanities focused. Mm -hmm. um, but then my advisor was like, you have to pinky promise me that you will take a science. And I was like, fine. So I pinky promised her. And then I took psychology, which is a lab science at Grinnell. <laughs> um, so I took that class and, um, and then I, sh I actually ended up taking her like like real life 200 level version of what pretty much was my tutorial um, last semester. So it's really nice to have that full circle. Um, and, and that is not only a thing that we have in advising, I think. I think we have classes that are specifically created for students to get out of their comfort zone. Mm -hmm. um, I know one of the classes I took, which is actually taught by my advisor, Paul. Really? Um, it was called um, How to Learn Physics. Right, so, physics for poets, yeah. Basically, it, it, yeah. Was, it was basically a physics class for students who never thought that they'd be able to excel or understand physics. I've always wanted to take that class. Oh, it was phenomenal. It yeah. was, we, I literally learned about like, you know, buoyancy and magnetism through pieces of tape and apples. Yeah, that's incredible. And, <laughs> and the amazing part is it, it was an education class too. So it was not only learning yourself how to learn physics, it was how to teach sciences to someone who wouldn't excel at science. Yeah. So it was a phenomenal class that I think really highlights the interdisciplinary nature of Grinnell. Oh, that's amazing. One of my favorite um, classes that I took was um, dramatic literature. And that was um, a crash course in theater history from the fifth century um, Greece all the way to 18th century France. And that's a long amount of time. Like that's way too much time to be able to do in, in one semester, but we did it. Mm -hmm. And then at the, and we went, we were all around the world. We were in America, we were in South America, 
we were in Japan and Korea and China and India and um, France and Italy and England. Like we were everywhere from all those um, time periods. And then at the end of the last day, she like she showed us all the plays that we had read. And I was like, wow, like I have a I have a whole knowledge of like how theater has developed as like not not as an artist, but as an academic. And that's, of course, I have taken many um, art, art, more artistry classes as well, but like to have that arsenal of information, to be that person in the room that has that um, in, in my back pocket is so, is, is really valuable. Do you want to talk about how you found your, um, your poli-sci advisor and your relationship with them? Sure. Um, so um, I took, I thought I was going to be uh, American politics, mm. you know, focus at the very least with my poli-sci major. Yeah. Um, and 2016 kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. So because of that, I decided I'm going to go out of my comfort zone and I'm going to take an intro to policy class focused on just comparative politics and international relations. Um, using the U.S. as really nothing more than a context to understand other nations. Um, and I loved it. And the advisor, the, well, the professor of that class ended up becoming my full-time academic advisor. And it was through me loving that focus and loving that intro class that I decided to ask her, you know, to be that advisor. It's kind of like proposing at Grinnell. That's, ex <laughs> that's what, exactly how it feels of yeah. like, I had a very similar thing where um, I, I knew I needed an English ad advisor and I took a class with um, my, uh, Professor John Garrison and he was fantastic. And within the first two weeks I was like, I want this man as my advisor. <laughs> so you just go, you, you pretty much ask them if, if, they, if they're taking advisees and if they would like to be your advisor and they almost certainly say yes. Mm -hmm. um, and since then it's really been a fantastic relationship because, they, because he's seen me in the classroom twice. I've also been his writing mentor. Mm -hmm. So I, and then all, we also have a completely separate relationship. So it's, it's really nice to have like a contact point at Grinnell who really knows all sides of me. Mm -hmm. um, and like last semester, it was a really, really busy and stressful semester, but um, we didn't see each other that often. And so we decided to like be really intentional about trying to spend time with each other or trying to like have those contact points or, where I feel supported. Um, so we walked his dog like once every other week. And that was like, I don't know if I would get that at any other community as close as Grinnell's where like, mm -hmm. I was feeling stressed and I was like, I need, I need to come in to your office hours or something like that. And he's like, nah, man, I'm just on Mac field throwing this ball for my dog. Come. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> it works for me. <laughs> so we, I think we could talk about Grinnell academics all day, but I feel yeah. like a big part of the academic experience we haven't talked about is off campus. Yeah. Um, and, you know, really taking our education in our own hands where the world is our backyard. Yeah. Um, I know you went abroad. And I know we went abroad in the same place, but yes, had two very, very different, different experiences. experiences. Yeah. So I want to hear a little bit about, you know, what you studied, what you did, and how you liked it. Right. So I think for off-campus study, you can take that two different ways. You can either go, okay, I'm going to be a computer scientist for the rest of my life. I'm, or like, or I'm going to be an engineer. So I might as well just go to Rome and study architecture, right? We had a friend who did that. Mm -hmm. And so it's so cool that like that was the last time in her life that she was ever going to be able to do that because she was going to spend the rest of her life working with computers. Mm -hmm. Or you can take the route that I think we both took mm -hmm. of like, I need to know right now for me whether or not I wanted to be an actor. And that was really important to me. So I went to a London conservatory. It's called um, um, London Dramatic Academy for 15 weeks. I did nothing but act and dance and sing and speak and learn how to have correct posture. And um, you should, you should it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I performed at the Tower of London and I saw, um, I saw countless amazing shows and I met with agents and I performed for a lot of really important people. And it was incredible, but I knew within the first four weeks that I was not going to be an actor. And so I answered that question. And I think I'm so grateful for it. And I think like in the moment, it was really scary of like, I'm at this conservatory with all these people who are very, very talented. And because Grinnell is a liberal arts experience, I felt a little out of my depth. Um, but I held my own, but like I, I knew that like, okay, I'm not gonna be an actor. And I needed to have that question answered and off-campus study did it for me. So yes, I was in London. London is a fantastic place. Um, I miss it dearly. I miss my friends dearly. Um, I was the only Grinnellian over there, um, which is very different from your experience. Mm -hmm, very. Um, so I was the only person who, who was from Iowa. You know, I was, there were not many people from the Midwest even. Um, so to have that 
difference with everybody, but then to all have like this shared experience and to really bond. And I felt like there were a lot of Grinnellians on my program, even though I was the only one. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I definitely learned how to be independent um, in a different country, which is a very different feeling than being independent at Grinnell, Iowa. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm very grateful, grateful for that experience. But you had something rather different, even yeah. though we were both in London. Mm -hmm. We were both in London at different times, yes, too. We just, times. we just missed each other. Yes. But um, I chose to do the Grinnell London program, yeah. which is the only, well, one of two programs owned and operated by the college itself. Yeah. Um, and the reason why I went there is because that iteration of the program as it stood, it's changed a lot since I went. Um, a big part of it was an internship experience. Yeah. And I knew since day one I walked into Grinnell, the minute I heard it, that there's a chance that a couple Grinnellians who go on that program get to work in Parliament. <laughs> and that to me was like, my magnum opus, it's what I worked towards my first two years of college. And um, I applied and I ended up getting hired by um, an amazing woman, Dame Louise Elman of the Labor Party, who is now kind of not as complicated. <laughs> Brexit like, had her change her orientation a lot, but um, she had been a career politician that had been in office since I was born. Um, same month even, <laughs> um, and I went up and I was an intern, and I kind of expected to be, you know, the kind of grab a coffee type intern, but I ended up being the fourth person in a four person team, including herself, in the middle of Westminster, like in the capital of government of the United Kingdom. And the first day, she sat me down and said, oh yeah, I'm doing a, a speech on Brexit next week, I need updated stats. And I was like, oh, wow, I, know very little from what I've read in the U.S. So it made it so I had to learn on the fly how to write as if I was a career politician in the U.K. Oh my God. And that's where that transferable skills from Grinnell <laughs> really yeah. come in. Oh yeah. The ability oh yeah. to read very quickly, yeah. just kind of communicate All well. All in the tutorial. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, and really it was, it was a phenomenal experience. I worked there four days a week and you know, I lived in a flat with three amazing Grinnellians in, in a part of London that I'm never gonna be able to afford for the rest of my oh, life. Um, tweet, yeah. And really it was just an amazing experience where I got to focus on parliament, but I still had four additional classes. Yeah. One of which was a theater course where I got to see you know theater shows as well. Another one was an art course where I learned how to do creative cartography in the town of London. Uh, my final project for that was I literally strapped a camera to my chest and walked different walks of like classic rock idols from the UK. That's the, dope. The Queen Walk was the best one. That's awesome. <laughs> um, so just, it was a period of experimentation for me. Yeah. It was a time where I learned that, you know, the things I'm learning at Grinnell can be transferable everywhere. Yeah. And that was really exciting for yeah. me. That's fantastic. So we both spent a summer in Grinnell, didn't we? Mm -hmm. The summer in between our second and third years. Yeah. Yeah, we lived in a house just over there. We did. Just right, over right, there. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, and and Gr Grinnell summers, I think, are phenomenal because it gives students the opportunity to continue some of the research that they're doing during the year, you know, into the summers right. even. Um, right. The big mentored advanced projects or MAPS you know, as, you, as you know, um, are really, I think, a, a staple of, of research here on campus. So have you, have you ever done a map yourself? I have done a map. The, yeah. the summer that I stayed, um, I did a map with Professor Dean, Tim Arner, um, and Professor Justin Thomas in the English and Theater Departments, re respectively. See? Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, and we um, worked together to create a virtual reality Beowulf Mead Hall. So that entire summer, I read Viking archaeology reports um, at various places around Grinnell, which is why I really loved being an, uh, like being a map student, is that like I can print out PDFs and read them in the park, and that's because Grinnell summers are just gorgeous. Mm -hmm. So I so that's what I did. I read these um, I read these reports and I read all of the items that were in the poem, and we translated them and we decided like where they were going to be placed throughout the building. So it was pretty much like set design and exactly what I want to do, which is like a page to stage translation. Um, so I spent uh, three months of my summer doing that. Um, and then we also um, get, you get paid if you come and stay in Grinnell as a MAP student. Mm -hmm. So I worked at the restaurant downtown as well, Prairie Canary. Um, I went to the pool a lot. I spent a lot of time outside. Mm -hmm. um, and I really had a delightful summer um, spending time with my friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and you worked at admissions actually that summer. I did, I did. Um, although I haven't had the big mentored advance project during the summer or during the year, yeah. um, I've done more than enough research you know, during my time and class time here right, at Cornell, right. which, which I think 
as much as the maps are an amazing opportunity that everyone should pursue, yeah. even if you don't, you're going to get that research experience here no matter what. Right. Um, and the thing that I love about Grinnell personally is the amount of autonomy you get within your classes to kind of make that research your own. So yes. out of the, wow, <laughs> as, as a second semester, fourth year, I'm not realizing the 10 poli sci classes I've taken at Grinnell. Um, <laughs> Every single one that has been focused on international relations or comparative politics, I have been able to choose to do my final project on the Middle East. Even though none of them are focused on the Middle East itself, every final project has always been take what you've learned in the course and apply it to an issue or an area that yeah. you were interested in. Yeah. And it makes it so you can have these unofficial you know, focuses within a larger major. Like yes. the fact that I say, oh yeah, I'm a poli sci major. But I focus on international relations and compared to politics, specifically within the Middle East, specifically within peace and conflict, is yeah. while also going to a school that is so intimate and individualized, yeah. is, is bananas to me. It is and, bananas. And lo looking back, just the amount that I've learned and the amount that I've grown because of the autonomy that I've had in yeah. the classroom. I, I think is incredible. I agree, I agree. I've been able to go, I was really unsure um, which final English seminar I was going to take, mm -hmm. and I went to both professors and I was like, all right, here's what I want to do with my life. Can I do this in your class? And one of them was like, yes, and I was like, no. And I was like, okay, great, I'm gonna choose that one. Mm -hmm. And so now I can, I can, because the, the, the course is studying, um, uh, uh, romantic writers um, and kind of applying techno technological developments to um, to the poetry and how it um, has developed throughout that time period. And what's also happening th during that time period is a lot of theater is moving indoors. And so mm -hmm. there's this whole separate technological development that isn't just like oxygen being discovered and like mm -hmm. and like and hard science things. It, it, it's like literally how do we change these scenes really quickly? And that's what I want to talk about. And like and so like how does that technology fit with me? How can I take this? Um, how can I take this information that I'm learning and put it in the fishbowl that I want to swim in? Mm -hmm. um, which I think is really, really cool. Mm -hmm. But I mean, beyond just like taking charge um, of, of your time here at Grinnell, the CLS does a fantastic job doing that as well. Do you want to mm -hmm. talk about your experience with the CLS? Yeah, I, I, I have had an amazing time. Uh, the CLS, the Careers Life and Service Office, really I think more than any other development office you might think of, there's nothing more than teaches you how to represent yourself in the best way. Um, and that means that when you're a first year, they don't come up to you and they ask you, you know, what do you want to do for the rest of your life? Right. And so they ask you, okay, what are your values? Do you want to work in an office? Do you want to work in the field? Or are you married to doing something in your major? Or are you, are you really open to doing anything in the job field? And it makes it so even from day one, you aren't thinking of things based on you know a monetary value or based on you know the rigid structure of oh i have to go into what i'm studying in college and instead the cls from day one just wants you to figure out where you would be the most efficient and where yeah. you would be the most happy yeah. um and they were the ones who taught me how to write my first cover letter they're the yeah. ones that helped me fix my first resume they helped me find my first internship and even going all the way to you know fourth year i'm now part of two career communities yeah. that have helped shape how I present myself to employers. Right. And, you know, as, as a fourth year who since, you know, December has known where he's going, mm -hmm. you know, right after post-grad, that has been very, very assuring. And it's 100% yeah. because of the CLS yeah. that I'm able to say that. I agree. I think the program that you mentioned, the career communities, is an incredible asset that the CLS has. Mm -hmm. um, so basically what a career community is, is an is a ability for students of the same, um, career paths to get together and then share the same resources. Mm -hmm. So I'm a part of the arts, media, and communication um, career community, and that's run by someone who used to work in professional theater. She used to work in showbiz in Chicago. She's directed, she's produced, she's casted, she's acted. So she knows showbiz, and that's mm -hmm. so important for someone like me who wants to go into showbiz. And mm -hmm. it's a scary world! So, but to have someone who like who knows how to like file your taxes and knows that like, okay, I'm applying for a casting job. What type of things do they want to hear from me? Mm -hmm. And that's the awesome thing about every person who does helm a, a career community is that they have worked in that field. Mm -hmm. So you can ask them those specific questions. And because you've met with them since probably your second or third year, when you really start to figure out what you want to do, they know your stories. They know how many stories that you like that you have in your arsenal. And they know that you can be like, all right, that one there, that one there, that mm -hmm. one there. It's so incredibly helpful. Mm -hmm. I'm really going to miss <laughs> my CLS advisor. Yeah. yeah. Same here. And, and 
The thing that I, I think I love about the career communities even more, so I'm, I'm part of the government and social service and law career communities, yeah. is that they're even helpful if you choose not necessarily to go into those fields. Yeah. Like, for example, law school to me is always something I think I'm going to do, but it's not something I wanted to do right away. Yeah. Um, and because of that, I was able to have discussions with the, the law, you know, career community advisor. She was able to tell me, oh, you know, it, it, if you just want to, for, for example, I'm, I know what I'm doing right after post-grad. I'm, I'm doing a business development job at a corporate law startup. And even though it's a corporate law startup, I'm doing nothing on the legal side of things. I'm doing all cold calling and selling. And I was able to go to her as you know, a, a law career advisor and say, Is, does this preclude me from going into law? And she was able to say no. And in fact, everything you're gaining there will, will prop you up great for the LSAT, will prop you up great for those interviews. Yeah, so even if you are not married to that community, you can still get advised effectively right. through them. Right. I agree. I agree. So let's go back a little bit about like why, how this, how this, like what this community has really meant to you throughout your, um, throughout your four years here and, um, and a little bit about, about what advice you might have for seniors because we're departing, yeah. but there are 400 ish people who are going to be arriving. Mm -hmm. So what do you think that you'd like to tell them? Be courageous which I know sounds cliche, but I'm gonna expand on it. Um, okay. Be courageous in the sense that nothing within the Grinnell community is out of reach. The hardest part of Grinnell, in my opinion, was getting in. The academics are challenging, you know, the, you are no longer gonna be the strongest person in a room, and that is scary to a lot of people, I think including my, myself when I came in. Yeah. But the one thing that I'm so happy I did was I put myself out there in every capacity. Like, for first year me, for better or for worse, no goal was too high to aspire to. That's awesome. And I think that is why I've been able to make the most out of my Grinnell experience. Because when you're surrounded by a group of people that are so engaged and so intelligent and so just generally inspiring, you just kind of have to go for it sometimes. Because it's never going to be, it's never going to be safe in your head to do so. And you'll learn more and more and more as, as, as you join this community that everyone is loving and supporting and not as scary as they sound. Yes. But in the very beginning, I know there's always that fear of, am I qualified? Can I do this? And the answer always has to be yes here because that is how you're gonna make the most of it. Mine, mine is actually very, very similar, which is just to take the wheel. Like, you can drive this car wherever you want to. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people might think that, that oh, I'm, I'm nervous about that, or, um, or I don't feel like I'm supported here, but there are countless resources that you need to access. And, that, and that's why the college has them, you know? There are, if, you're, if you're struggling, people care about you, and we do care about you, and this community is really astounding. Um, and it's been really nice to kind of be held and, 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 be, and be just cuddled. That's not, like the, that's not the greatest word to use, but it's like I, I feel so comfortable here. Um, and that like I know that when I'm, when I'm drowning, the, I have my tutorial advisor, my English advisor, my, my theater advisor, my CLS advisor. I have my friends. I have all these people who can catch me immediately. And that's, it's, it becomes so much easier to swim here. Um, so, and I feel like also people might be a little nervous because of Grinnell, it's in the middle of nowhere and everything, but I prompt, like this place, this place, when you fit in, when you fit in, you won't want to leave. Yeah. 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 Thank you.